just missed us. Welcome to Good Game Spawn Point, the show for gamers by gamers. I am Galactic Fleet Admiral Darren. I am First Engineer Barjo. And I'm Star Hex, best Cosmo pilot in the sky. And thank you, Darren, for that quick interstellar orbit. Amazing. You're very welcome. Oh, you know what? Today's episode should be entirely dedicated to games set in space. <gasps> yes, games full of intergalactic exploration and cool sci-fi action. We could review Drox Operative. <gasps> Make it so. Oh, and we should check out the alien worlds of Starbound. But first, how about a Darren's Challenge? This week I challenge you to identify this spacecraft. What game is it from? I'll give you the answer at the end of the show. Well, let's get started in our first review. Affirmative. Guys, there are almost as many space games out there as there are stars in the sky, and that means that a few slip under the radar, like Drox Operative. This game is a couple of years old, but it's full of that great outer space action. This is an action role-playing game wrapped around a top-down space shooter. Uh, you pick a ship and head off into the galaxy, which is made up of a series of sectors, each connected via space lanes or warp gates that you can jump between once you unlock them. And your ultimate goal is to win over each sector of space by any means necessary. Yes, and at first that freedom is pretty confusing. There's a lot of information to take in and menus to figure out. And the game doesn't really do much to point you in any particular direction. But I guess any direction is fine. Still, Hex, I felt quite lost. It took me about 30 minutes to figure out where to get quests from. But after you get your head around how everything works, you slip into a fun little groove of exploring, fighting, finding gear, upgrading your ship, and shaping the galaxy to your whims. By trading with or helping out the various races, you can get on their good sides, or you can just try and destroy them, or try and play races against each other. There's a deep AI system that's a lot of fun to mess around with. Yeah, and the combat is good fun too. There's a great variety of weapons to find and each one works a little bit differently. You have auto-targeting lasers, mines, manually targeted missiles and all sorts to play around with. It's just satisfying to tear through groups of enemy ships. Upgrading your ship is equally satisfying. As you destroy enemy ships and complete quests, you gain experience points to spend on improving your skills. Your ship gets bigger and better as you play and open up some more slots to put equipment in. You're essentially free to put whatever equipment and weaponry you want into your ship, uh, leaving you to make it exactly how you want. But you are limited by how much power your ship can generate, so you need to balance out your equipment and not put in too many power-hungry systems. All in all, this game has some rough edges, and visually it's a little bit hit and miss at times, but you can lose hours to this game. It's surprisingly deep. I'm giving it 7.5 out of 10 rubber chickens. I especially liked that you can even explore the galaxy with a friend by your side in some simple co-op multiplayer. I'm going to give it 7.5 as well. All right, now it's off to the news with Goose. Where's Goose? A uh, slight problem. I think I left Goose up in orbit. You what? Uh, 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 no problem. I'll just go and fetch him immediately. Back soon. <clears throat> Darren, lift off! <laughs> bubble around your head. You can take your helmet off now, Goose. Oh, thanks, Darren. Say, while I was up here, I played a bit of Out There and I was thinking maybe we could review it. <gasps> what a wonderful idea! Out There is a space resource management game. You wake up from cryosleep to find that your ship has boldly drifted into deep space where no human has gone before. As you search your surroundings, you come across alien technology which allows you to jump quickly between star systems. With this tech on board, you set out to return to Earth. The game is presented a bit like a comic. 
there's very little animation, but each frame is beautifully crafted with strong colour and detail, and the story is charmingly told through text-based journal entries. While Out There draws some obvious visual inspiration from FTL, the game is far, far away from real-time action. Instead, it's about choice and consequence. Your ship's fuel, oxygen and hull are your three main resources, and you'll need to juggle these as you leap across the universe. If one of these key resources reaches zero, it's game over! <laughs> To keep these bars in good stead, you'll need to acquire elements like hydrogen and iron, which can replenish your key resources. The best way to find these is to travel to planets and probe them from orbit, or land for some drilling action. All of these actions cost you resources, sometimes more than you can gain from your efforts. But a few bad decisions can cost you dearly. Oh, there's nothing quite like a good haul, though. That feeling when you hit a fuel jackpot uh, gets my positrons racing. I must say, though, inventory management is a little frustrating. Slots for equipment and minerals are shared, so there's only a small amount of breathing room. I found it difficult to save up rare minerals to spend on tech upgrades whilst maintaining my key resources. Yeah, it certainly is strict, but I think that's kind of the point. As you progress, you'll come across abandoned alien vessels which you can commandeer. They tend to have more cargo space, be more efficient in fuel and oxygen consumption, or are a little sturdier and can take more hull damage. This alleviates a bit of that inventory pressure. Affirmative! Uh, when you enter a new star system, a journal entry will pop up detailing what has happened during the trip. If your lucky stars are aligned, you might pick up some extra fuel. If luck isn't on your side, you might cross paths with a hostile alien ship and take a hit to your hull. <laughs> you'll often be asked to make decisions in these text events. Oh, it's a bit like a choose-your-own-adventure book! Yes, but these random encounters don't just add depth to the story. They're a key mechanic, as they mean you'll be constantly changing your strategy on the fly. You may have hopped systems in pretty good shape, but some disaster along the way leaves you desperately searching for oxygen. It's these elements that make every playthrough feel like a little story is unfolding. Every life is a new adventure. Uh, affirmative, and it's these stories that keep you coming back. Out There really captures that sense of exploring the unknown. You'll meet strange alien species, learning more of their language with each successive interaction. You'll leap to unknown star systems. You'll warp through black holes. It's all very mysterious and exciting. And coupled with its beautiful presentation, this is a perfect mobile game, so I'm going to give it 9 out of 10. It's often unforgiving, but that makes a good run feel enormously rewarding. I'm giving it nine as well. Okay, Darren, I think I'm going to miss the news if I don't get back down to Earth. Do you mind giving me a lift? Oh, affirmative. It'd be my pleasure. Just get your helmet back on and uh, I'll send you a tether. Tie that on and... Yeah, excellent. Off we go. Blast off. Whoa. Back to Earth. Slow down. Oh. Thanks, Darren. Probably work on that re-entry. Uh, okay, time for the news. Goose here with all the space news from around the world. The North American Space Agency, better known as NASA, has outlined several planned missions as part of their recent budget proposal. If successfully funded, NASA plans to launch a mission in 2021 that would send two astronauts on a flyby of Mars, which would pass first by Venus, before arriving back on Earth in 2023. This would be the first time human beings had ever travelled further than our moon and could pave the way for man to land on Mars in future missions. A new $150 million centre designed to clean up space junk is to be built at the Mount Stromlo Observatory outside Canberra. Currently, scientists estimate there are over 300,000 pieces of debris in Earth's orbit, which pose a serious threat of colliding with each other and satellites, potentially putting space-based technology and space travel at great risk. Scientists at the centre will first focus on finding ways to reduce future collisions of junk and eventually start using ground-based lasers. <laughs> lasers. <laughs> <clears throat> ground-based lasers to destroy pieces of junk. And that's all the space news for this week. Back to regular gaming news next week. And as always, I'm Goose. Thanks for watching the news. Well, I am glad Goose got back all right. I know, right? And now that he's safe and sound, I think we can tackle a question or two. And it wouldn't be a space special if we didn't tackle a question about Kerbal Space Program. So uh, let's go with this one from Quantum Physics, who is in the universe, uh, which is outside Australia, obviously. 
I have two Kerbal Space Program related questions that I would like Darren to answer. One, I'm attempting to perform a rendezvous both in Kerbin orbit and Mun orbit. Can you give me some tips on how to perform them? And for the Mun orbit rendezvous, what a suitable lander orbiter design will be. Two, I am looking for instructions on how to perform a free return to trajectory using only one burn to get to the Mun, back again, and into a re-entry trajectory once I'm in orbit. Yours in gaming, quantum physics. P.S. If Darren is not the one answering this question, then I shall adapt the laws of physics in such a way that you are sucked down a wormhole. Yee! No pressure. Those sound like some tricky maneuvers, hex, but I'm sure I can manage them without Darren's help. How hard can it be? Fajo, I really think we should get Darren. I mean, first of all, I don't want to get sucked down a wormhole. And second of all, you're pretty terrible at Kerbal Space Program. Remember what happened when you attempted a Mun landing? Oh, oh dear. Oh, oh dear. Oh, oh, oh dear. Oh, there's four oh Kerbals. Oh, oh. Ah! Oh, they're doomed. Oh, Darren, I think your rocket was a bit rubbish. <laughs> Negative. <laughs> nice try, though. Negative. Or, or that landing on Duna? No, 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 power no, no, you're coming in too hot, Bartram! No, 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 What a rubbish rocket that was, Darren. <laughs> those poor, brave Kerbals. Hey, those Kerbals knew what they were in for when they signed up, Hex. Oh, just think of their virtual families. Oh, right. All right, fine. I'll call Darren under protest. It's ringing. Hi, Darren, it's Bajo here under protest. Look, we've got a few questions about Kerbal Space Program and they've specifically asked for your help. Do you think you could come down and give us a hand under protest? Oh, I'd be delighted, Bajo. I'll be there faster than you can say lift off. All right, see you soon. Bring candy. I don't know about that, though. I think I can say it pretty fast. Ready? I'll just want my voice. <coughs> a lift. Hello, oh, Bajo. Hello, hello, Hex. Oh. Make way. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty quick, Darren. Mm. There's rocket science to do when we don't have all day. Scoot your equatorial bulge. There we are. Now, what does the spalling want to know? Uh, well, firstly, they were wondering how to do a rendezvous in Kerbin orbit. Oh, my. Well, rendezvous can be very tricky manoeuvres to execute, but I'll, I'll do my best to help you out. Uh, firstly, you're going to need something to rendezvous with. Uh, build yourself a rocket capable of entering orbit and make sure to attach a docking adapter. I've been through the basics of creating rockets and entering orbit before, so I won't go into the finer details involved with that, but if you miss those, you may want to look in an online guide. Then, launch into a nice circular 100km orbit, and for this we're just going to go with an equatorial orbit. You'll make life much easier for yourself if you ensure your orbit passes directly over the launch site. That's pretty easy, Darren. I don't know what all the fuss was about. Oh, well, that's because that was the easy part, Bajo. Now things get tricky as we attempt to launch another rocket to rendezvous with it. Uh, this is where having your previous rocket orbit over the launch site is very helpful. You'll want to go into the map view and launch your second rocket only once you see the first one about to fly overhead. Uh, this will keep them relatively close to each other from the start. Now use the maneuver node to help guide your second rocket into a similar orbit as the first. Uh, note that if you are behind the first rocket, you want to be in a slightly smaller orbit to catch up. Or if you're ahead, then you'll want a slightly larger orbit to let it catch up with you. Now right click on the first rocket and select set as target. All right, Darren, well, I think we've got these two babies in a pretty similar orbit with each other, but they're still really far apart. Oh, patience, Hex. I was just getting to that. Uh, now, once you've set the first rocket as your target, you'll see these orange intersect markers show up on the orbits. These tell you the points at which your two rockets will be closest to each other in each of their orbits. You ideally want to get an intersect distance of less than five kilometres. Uh, but if your orbits are a tad off, then make sure you use the maneuver node to help you get them close together before using the time warp. All right, Darren, I think we're getting there. <laughs> Indeed we are, Bajo. Uh, but don't relax yet. This is where things get really tense. Now, once they reach the intersect point, pay attention to what your relative speed is to the target, which you can see here. From this point on, it's an extremely delicate situation, and you don't want to crash into them now. Okay, Darren, we've almost done it. It's right there. <laughs> oh, it's so tense. It's so tense. Uh, now you'll want to use only RCS thrusters for the final approach. Otherwise, you're just asking for catastrophe. You will likely need to switch to your original rocket to align the docking port with the approaching ship. Now, using your thrusters, very gently align yourself using the icons and by visually checking the docking ports are aligned and begin to move together. Then, once you're extremely close and perfectly aligned, your ships will magnetically dock together. <laughs> and there you have it, a rendezvous in Kerbin orbit. 
That's a lot of work, Darren. Mm. Uh, the Spawnling was also wondering, though, um, about how to do a Mun rendezvous and what a good lander and orbiter design would be. Oh, well, essentially it's the same process. It's all about aligning their orbits and fine-tuning them until they rendezvous. Uh, as for lander orbiter designs, well, I assume they want a lander so they can relaunch and rendezvous with the orbiter. If so, a design similar to what the original moon landing missions used would serve the purpose well. Uh, that is what they were designed for, after all. Well, fair enough, Darren. And uh, lastly, the Spawnling was asking about how to do a free return to trajectory to the mud and back only using one burn. Hmm, well, they'll need at least two burns, one to get into orbit and one to transfer into the free return trajectory. Yeah, well, they did actually say using one burn once they were in orbit. Yeah. So. Oh, what a clever spawnling! Well, we've been through the procedures for a mission to land on the Mun, and this is a similar procedure with one major difference. We want to miss the Mun. Uh, so launch yourself into an eastward orbit at 90 degrees and establish an orbit somewhere between 120 and 160,000 metres. Now initiate your burn as per a usual Mun landing mission. But to achieve a free return trajectory, you'll need to continue to burn your engines until you see your apoapsis reach 14.5 million metres. Then cut your engine. If you've done it correctly, that one burn will put you on a trajectory to pass over the surface of the Mun, causing its gravity to slingshot you back to Kerbin and into the atmosphere for a safe return. Oh, I have to admit, Darren, you're pretty good at rocket science. <laughs> well, I need to be. You don't get access to a set of atomic-powered single-stage-to-orbit ultra-scramjet rocket boots by being a rocket science noob. Right, OK. Well, now just to safely guide these Kerbals back down to the ground. <laughs> All right, we're coming in a little hot, but... <laughs> uh, deploy the parachute, Bajo. Deploy the parachute. Darren, I think I know how to deploy a parachute. I'm pretty sure after Bajo. executing a free return trajectory I know how to deploy Bajo, Bajo, oh. I mean to close Bajo, 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 you're not slow the down. only one who's got a rocket science here. Bajo! I think I'm in... Ah! Ah! Bajo, you do realise that they crashed while you were saying that. Maybe, maybe, they're, maybe they're okay, Darren. Maybe they're all right. The odds of surviving an impact at that speed are approximate. Never tell me the odds, Darren. Never tell me the odds. Well, um, I think that's all we have time for this week. Uh, but if you'd like to ask us something, then go in here and send it in. Next time, I'm doing the landing. Sure. Since humanity could gaze upon the stars, mortals have always wondered what it must be like to travel to them, what mysteries they must hold, and what adventures might await them. But until noob humanity figure out how to get there, they'll just have to make do with Starbound. Oh, well, Darren, that was almost beautiful. Yeah, I'm not sure about the noob manatee part, but very inspiring. Oh, thank you. Starbound is a dig em up brought to us by one of the creators of Terraria. And if you know that game, then you'll recognize the similarities instantly. Starbound's gameplay is very similar to Terraria as well, except it's on an intergalactic scale. Your objective is to explore, dig, hunt, collect, build, craft, and gear up. However, this is no easy task, as the moment you land on the planet, everything is out to get you. Yes, each planet has its own variety of enemies, each with their own different attack patterns. And they surprised me a few times, guys, because even the tiniest of birds can be quite a challenge. Oh. The monster design is quite interesting, although I found their screams a bit scary. <laughs> Each planet you visit mixes up the type of enemies you'll find, along with gear and minerals too. Even though the graphics appear quite simple, you can tell a lot of thought has gone into the colours and the look of the game. The developers had a simple plan when designing these planets. They didn't want any two to be the same, which is why the game has a lot of procedurally generated elements. All this means is that much of what you find has a random element to it, so each moment in the game can feel truly unique. Yes, and it's quite good procedurally generated content, isn't it? Mm, 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 mm. Sometimes I'd be happily having a nice and quiet adventure, cutting down trees and collecting ore in the ground, 
and then others are to be thrown into hectic fights constantly and attacked by meteor storms. Ah! Ah! Meteors! Ah! They're almost as scary as landslides. Oh, landslides. Land yes, it, it can all be quite stressful. On top of that, you also need to keep eating food or you'll starve. And on top of that, when nighttime falls, if you don't have enough warm clothes on, you'll start to freeze. Yes, luckily you can craft a campfire to stay warm or simply teleport back to your ship if you're on the planet's surface. Yes, you definitely need to be prepared before going out into the world. Digging straight down with no torches or food is just a bad idea. Yes. I love having my own ship, you guys. It just feels nice decorating it with items that I've found around the worlds, flying through the stars with friends with so much to explore and discover ahead of us. Yes, it's so much more fun when you're playing with friends. Mine for me! Mine! It's telling me to work. Mine, my minions. Multiplayer is a little tricky to set up, but once you get it going, it's much more efficient gathering and working together. That is, of course, unless you're playing with Barjo. Why, whatever you do mean, Hex? Barjo has a habit of filling up everyone else's ships with the dirt. Hey, hey, if you can't keep a clean and tidy ship, it's not my fault. Uh, affirmative. Uh, one of the greatest parts of this game is that you control your friends by messing with their ship and hiding their stuff. That's a pretty sick hammer right here. Oh, what happened to your poster? Oi, get, get, what? get out. Don't let me... <laughs> Well, I guess it is all part of the fun. I was really impressed with all the crafting. There's so much to make. The menus take a while to get used to, but once you have the hang of it, you can start to get a feel for what you need to be mining and collecting to toughen yourself up. And I especially liked it when we found instruments and rocked out in space. Rock it out, hype is <laughs> And I'm a bird. Yes, there's so much to do in this game. In fact, there's quite a lot about Starbound that I think is incredible, especially the music. It's some of the best sci-fi music I've ever heard in a video game. So good. All in all, I'm giving Starbound Barjo! A editorial alert! Editorial alert! Barjo, much like in the early days of Minecraft, this game is technically still in what's known as early beta. That means it's not finished yet, and there are many features and tweaks still to be added. I'm afraid I can't let either of you score it until the game is officially released and complete. Otherwise, it's just not fair. Darren, normally I would agree with you, but this game is already so polished and fully featured mm. that mm. I think now is actually a really great time to jump in and experience all of this space exploration and adventure. I mean, just look at what people have created. I'm giving it... Oh, I'm sorry, I can't allow it. Eight out of ten. Oh, negative. I'm giving it eight as well. <laughs> oh, for the love of all noob humanity. Oh. Calm your circuits, Darren. Oh. Ah, what a fun show that was, guys. So much galactic goodness. All right, Darren, can you give us the answer to your challenge? Affirmative. I challenged you to identify this particular spaceship and what game it was from. It is, in fact, the X-Wing from Lego Star Wars. Oh, Such a cool ship. Yeah, that trench run battle was so much fun. <laughs> well done to everyone who got it right. Next week on the show, it's time to saddle up with Mr Sticky Tongue himself in Yoshi's New Island. <laughs> Turn of the cute flutter jump. Till next time, may all your games be good ones. Hex out. Barjo out. Darren out. Say, Darren, have you been to the edge of the observable universe by any chance? Affirmative. And it was there that I discovered the source of all cheese sandwiches in oh. the cosmos. Oh. Let's go there. Let's go there right now. Affirmative. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> Take on, Darren. Stop.